right the topic for today is a really simple one it is uh, bronchial angiography now is me theory mein there is nothing difficult the only thing is that uh, to look at the bronchial arteries which are very tiny and uh, really small structures almost 1 mm of size it's not uh, very easy every time but if we train our eyes then we can maybe start practicing in the normal ct thorax also and any angiography that you are reporting right any angiography that you are reporting in that we can make it a habit to look and try to trace the bronchial arteries a little bit otherwise don't worry about this if you are not able to enter to trace the entire course of the bronchial artery because let me tell you the normal routine ct angiography it is not very easy unless and until the bronchial artery are dilated or hypertrophied then it's pretty easy to pick them up and right? and other than that of course the gold, gold standard is something like a dsa or uh, selective aortogram which helps us to visualize them with more contrast with subtracted images to so dsma it is much easier to visualize and comment on the bronchial arteries to look at any ectopic origin and things like that because ideally it is done in the dsa suite only right when you are uh, taking any case of bronchial artery embolization you always do this uh, dsa imaging also first you do the diagnostic imaging and then you go on with the therapeutic session for the same so ct angiography pe don't be disheartened i'm just telling you the spoilers don't be disheartened if you're not able to locate and trace the entire course of bronchial arteries on your routine ct and you theek hai no big deal about that it's not that easy they are not visible that well right now in this class sir, what all we are going to cover is we are going to cover the normal anatomy then uh, we'll have a little bit about the normal function of the bronchial artery then we will talk about the protocol the ct protocol that you have okay and after that ct protocol ke baad we are going to look at the pathologies the pathologies common pathologies that are going to affect my bronchial arteries and main jo response bronchial arteries ka aata in any given pathology it is usually going to be either dilated or hypertrophied theek hai so uska jo criteria hai ct pe all of that we are going to see right anatomy ho gaya variants then comes up protocol pathology little bit about hemoptysis because uh, this ir class i think it is taken by dr akhil sir on bronchial artery embolization so i'll just touch a little bit about that and then you can watch that lecture later on then comes your conclusion theek hai so bronchial and pulmonary circulation is very important okay you have the pulmonary arteries and then the bronchial arteries so pulmonary artery they are going to supply majority of the blood flow to the lung and they are going to be involved in the second important thing which is a gaseous exchange to ek to lung mein jo blood flow aa raha hai and the gaseous exchange in a normal setting it is done by the pulmonary arteries then bronchial arteries ka kya role hota hai if they are not helping in the gas exchange if they are not helping in the blood flow then what now always remember pulmonary artery is going to carry what it is going to carry my deoxygenated blood which has to get oxygenated by the lung theek hai but bronchial arteries are going to give you oxygen rich blood bronchial arteries are like the systemic arteries because lung are also a tissue which also need the oxygenated blood so oxygenated blood at systemic pressure nourishing the lung structure second cheez hoga jo bhi lung ka parenchyma hai connective tissue hai usko nourish karna and blood supply dena apart from that it is not involved in gas exchange inka caliber is going to be small usually in the range of 1 mm to 2 mm they are really small caliber vessels so the caliber is going to be smaller okay and they are going to be now this is important they are high resistance vessels and low capacitance ठीक है, so they are going to dilate to a particular extent, but then they are not very distensible. So high resistance will start building up, and this is the reason they are going to be prone for rupture, prone for pseudo aneurysm and aneurysm formation, and then comes a lot of hemoptysis after that. So these are high resistance, low capacitance. क्योंकि small caliber है, so we remember the Laplace law. Everything is according to physics. So, okay, caliber is small, so they they are not very distensible. That means low capacitance and high resistance vessels. Their function is to supply oxygenated blood and not help in the gaseous exchange. 
Now, actually what happens between the bronchial artery and pulmonary artery, these are not just two isolated systems. The normal patient also, there is a healthy microanastomosis at the level of alveoli and respiratory bronchioles. So there is some kind of connection. There is a microanastomosis between them. Now, if this mic if anything happens to the bronchial artery, right? So pulmonary artery will try to compensate. And apart from that, if anything happens to the pulmonary artery, for example, thromboembolism, pulmonary hypertension, then what will happen? Bronchial artery will try to compensate via this anastomosis. Okay. So this anastomosis is very important. It is like a compensatory life-saving mechanism that exists between pulmonary arteries and bronchial arteries. Okay. So anytime you're seeing a bronchial artery which is dilated, so you have to always think that if my bronchial artery is dilated, then it is a thumb rule that I have to rule out any pathology of pulmonary artery. Because pulmonary artery may something has happened and that is causing bronchial artery to compensatorily dilate. So dilated bronchial artery as a thumb rule, rule out pulmonary artery pathology. Okay. So this part was clear. Let's do in this. So, abhi humne kuch nahi. we have just done a simple thing. Ke bronchial artery, one we did this, the agenda, what we are going to discuss. And then bronchial artery and uh, pulmonary artery ke beech mein, there is an anastomosis. Okay. So, pulmonary arteries are going to supply major blood flow to the lung. And important thing, ke gaseous exchange mein they are going to take part. On the other hand, they will supply the oxygenated blood. They are going to supply what? Deoxygenated blood without a doubt. And they are going to supply oxygenated blood. They are like the systemic arteries. They are also going to supply the blood to the various structures. Okay, the vasa vasora figures, trachea, the connective tissue, but not participate, but not participate in gaseous exchange. Ab Laplace law kya bolta hai? They are small caliber, diameter is smaller. So they are going to be high resistance and low capacitance. That means they are not very dispensable vessels. They are prone to rupture if the pressure keeps on increasing. They cannot dilate beyond a particular point. Okay. Then another thing was that pulmonary artery and bronchial artery, they are not two isolated systems. Between them, there is a microanastomosis, a wonderful uh, thing which is happening at the microscopic level, at the level of alveoli and the respiratory bronchioles. So if there is any pulmonary artery pathology, such as thromboembolism, such as pulmonary arterial hypertension, if isme is issue, hota hai, then bronchial artery tries to compensate it keeps on dilating. So you see the bronchial artery dilatation. And because of that, the thumb rule is going to be, if you're seeing dilated bronchial arteries, then by instinct, you have to rule out any pulmonary artery pathology. So because there are two systems helping each other, and uh, one, if one is having any pathology, the other is going to compensate, and mostly they're going to compensate by showing dilatation and hypertrophy. Okay, so this is the only thing we have discussed. Kya. Now we'll move on to the next. Now comes anatomy of the bronchial arteries. So origin may, the one thing is that orthotopic, that means normal origin. And then one thing also you see, a variant which is ectopic. Ectopic arteries, they are seeing in case of 8% up to 56% of population, they can show these ectopic arteries. So we need to know what are ectopic sites. Ho sakte. Orthotopic means arising from descending thoracic aorta. Anywhere from the superior end plate of T5 up to the inferior end plate of T6 vertebra. So T5, T6 cut, T5 superior to T6 inferior. If at any uh, part in this level, if it is arising from the descending thoracic aorta, it is going to be orthotopic. Ectopic means anywhere else from aorta apart from this site, then it is going to be number one ectopic or from any other vessel if it is arising, that also means it is ectopic bronchial artery. Okay? So potential ectopic sites of origin can be the inferior aortic arch, arch of aorta ka inferior aspect of the arch or the any other part, not T5, T6, but distal level. So distal part of the descending thoracic aorta or from subclavian artery, brachiocephalic, thyrocervical, and so on. A simple sa diagram hai, RSNA ka, that I'm going to show. Uski madad se, it's going to be easier to look at the common ectopic sites. Okay? Then imaging landmark, mein kya ho left main bronchus, where left.